you everyone for coming today. Uh, you don't need to actually get settled because I'm gonna get you standing for a second. I have a timer here of five minutes and then I would like to use this time for everyone to try to know as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. What they do, where they come from, their name, even if you forget their name later, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> it's all good. But you got five minutes to do that, so please stand up, rumble the whole room, do whatever you want, but just get to know each other, and then we're gonna get started, right? So my timer is here. Uh, I'll have a list of your name, and then I could come and ask you how many people did you get to know, who they are, what do they do, and all of that, right? So I have the timer here, so let's just get started. Go ahead. Stand, stand up and just go ask, and don't be shy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tonight, and we are happy to see that every event we have more and more people. Is hot, right? So welcome to Teranga. So many people ask me, like, what's Teranga? Teranga is a Senegalese word. Me and Mac, we come from Senegal in West Africa, and this word means welcome. And this event was born because we just talked together, and we were like. We need more events where people can share, where people can talk, when aspiring people like them that you meet every day, but you just meet a few, like, so short time. You don't have really time to know more. And they have so amazing story to tell. So we can just gather people and talk about it. Anyone can also participate. So don't hesitate if you, you want also to be part of the Valley, even your own events or your own ideas. You are really welcome to share with us and we will try to make it happen. For sure. So today uh, we have uh, three amazing athletes. We got Walder right here, who's my brother. I, I, used, I used to be in a basketball group chat with him and we used to go back and forth and I never met him. And one day I suddenly bumped into him, I'm like, oh, you're the same guy <laughs> that used to go back and forth with me in the group, you know? But uh, I'm really happy to have you here today. Thank you. And looking forward to, you know, hearing all of the things that you have to share with us. And beautiful Julie, right? <laughs> Julie is um, amazing because if you see, the, look at the flyer that was, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, if I look at you like right now, there's no way I can even imagine you can do something like that, right? I'm still trying to figure out what's the, the, the thing, but I guess you can, you know, give us a little more of like how that works, yeah. right? I'm uh, looking forward to that as well. And finally, Anna, right? Anna is beautiful, as you can see, and also uh, I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions because I care so much about what I eat, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you're a nutritionist, right? And Julie does yoga, so we or we have a pretty rich panel here. And feel free to ask all the questions, especially those at the back. Like, we wanna hear more questions from over there than over here, right? I can see you're pretty shy, you're kinda laughing, like, you know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, first of all, thank you all for coming and let's uh, stay here for a couple of hours and all sweat like a sauna. It's very <laughs> healthy, yeah. I have to say. Uh, no, but thank you for coming and uh, what I want to take out from this session and I want you to take out are actually lessons learned. So I'm going to share a little bit of my experience, where I come from and what I'm, le what I'm learned from it and obviously you can always interrupt me and ask me questions at the end as well. Uh, so I'm Anna, I'm coming I'm from Portugal and then I'm a nutritionist. Uh, I did my course in uh, Porto and the reason that I became so passionate about food was because when I was 16 I started uh, being an athlete and I was very aware of what I was eating. I needed, I needed to take care about my energy levels, I needed to take care of my body weight as well. And with the time I really thought, whoa, this actually is such an interesting topic. I can also help people to feel good every day of their lives. So therefore I went uh, for university and did a nutrition course. Just before I finished my course, uh, I started my own company because I wanted to reach more people. But it's really funny, every time I look back in that, uh, in that time, I love 
of myself because I was so naive. <laughs> I think I had no idea what I was doing, everything was a mess. I started, uh, so I Love Me was the name of my company and we were, uh, uh, we were delivering personalized healthy meals to people's doorstep. And in the beginning, how do I start? How did I start? I was on my kitchen, planning myself, cooking myself and delivering. That's how I started my company. One of the things that I really wanted was to deliver meals with ingredients that were the most amazing ingredients that you can find on the market. Organic, biological, you name it. Whole wheat, obviously, what, because I was buying such expensive ingredients, my product was very expensive. And I was not selling much and I couldn't understand why, because my product was amazing. And then from speaking with the customers, then I understood that they didn't want a, a premium meal. They just want to eat healthy or healthier than they were eating. And the second most important thing is your team. Who do you have next to you working with you? You have to look at two, uh, two areas. First, their skills. Do they match your skills? Do you have different skill sets? Can you... Can you uh, have different responsibilities on which part of, on which uh, part of the team. It's very important that you have people that know how to do something and other person that knows how to do something else, so you can have everything in house. Yeah. So uh, at Goma Greens, we deliver at your doorstep fresh and seasonal vegetables and fruits, and we also uh, support local communities by doing that. So we don't import anything; it's really locally produced. Yes. So I took this, this challenge to uh, put everything that I know already, and obviously we are always learning, and I'm going to learn a lot in this role, but I'm really passionate about what I'm doing right now. So, but if you are trying to bring a product or a service to the market, make it cool, make it fun. And make it for everyone, that we can reach everyone, everyone, and not only the people that are already interested in health and sports. Yeah, and thanks for being here, and I'm open to questions, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, Anna, as a nutritionist, do you have any personal rules for eating? Balance. Balance. That's, that's my personal rule, because a lot of people look at me, and, and I already got this many times, oh, but I'm not like you, I don't eat like you. I'm a person, I also go in the restaurant and I eat whatever I want, but on the next day, I try to balance. So you, you make sure that you eat on a weekly basis your vegetables and you're healthy, but enjoy your weekend or have a couple of drinks. It's all about balance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> couple. <laughs> couple. <laughs> okay. yeah. Do you, do you supply uh, only balanced food or do you also supply training courses? And I, sometimes I do workshops as well. Um, that's not my main uh, activity, but I do actually with Lean Wars as well. So if you also uh, follow Lean Wars, sometimes we cooperate and we do some workshops, yes. Okay. And your target is everybody, uh, I mean, every <coughs> citizen or just one part of the people? For workshops, you mean? Uh, no, for, for the delivery, for the food. For the food. Yes. Uh, we deliver in Shanghai. And uh, nowadays we have mostly expats because they, we are more used to uh, really um, fresh and uh, tasty vegetables. And the Chinese are not used to cook so much. Okay. We, we want to go to the Chinese market, but we are seeing how can we do that. Yeah, and one of, the, one of the ideas that we have is go for the moms with kids because I think moms are very concerned with kids' health and that's something that I really love as well, the kids' education, so maybe we go through that. First, I have to relate to a lot of the things that Anna said, mm -hmm. um, just because I think you know we're we're providing with Linworks like holistic wellness activities, and it includes nutrition. Like a lot of that of things that you said uh, really resonate. Um, the emphasis on balance as well. Um, basically, from from my perspective, um, how I got into this industry was totally by. I want to say mistake, but a chance. Mm -hmm. um, I was originally from a hospitality, food and beverage, uh, tourism background. Um, I was actually, I didn't know, but I was passionate about service more than I was passionate about um, the industry itself. It all relates together, but um, I found out that I could also deliver the same passion for service in other industries. Um, I came to China basically, so I'm French, um, half Taiwanese. 
um, came to China on multiple occasions. Um, I was born in France, but when I was 10, I moved to Shanghai the first time, stayed for um, basically through middle school, high school, went back to France, um, went to college, and then went back to China. On this side, I started doing a lot of yoga, um, just to find balance, um, to be able to still do well in my job and still find like somewhere like you know stay stay sane I felt like I needed to take a moment for myself just you know put this aside <laughs> um, it was an opportunity for me to when I quit my job to just go for my teacher training that I've always wanted to do without necessarily thinking I wanted to teach yoga or do anything uh, from there um, building my own company was not even a thought um, I just wanted to take a break and basically from there when I um, I went to India multiple times did a lot of trainings around um, you know about yoga workshops um, everything touching it really opens up um, more knowledge around uh, lifestyle um, when you start to dig into yoga you learn it's not so much of a, of a physical activity it's a lot more about a lifestyle uh, it's about how you balance yourself mind and body and you know with your environments people everything so I became really passionate about that it was like a discovery for me I kept digging learning more about it um, eventually when I got my certification I realized I actually love sharing that and just seeing the differences between um, people before class and after class gave me so much um, just happiness to, to be able to share that and to, to have such a strong impact directly on people um, then I was starting to think I want to share that but I really want people to to see that it's about like the lifestyle and not just the food or like just the yoga so I started in Guangzhou um, a little bit similar to yours as well I was starting to make juices I was starting to do like cleansing um, programs teaching yoga people were like what are you doing you know what what are you trying to do what's your what's your brand um, and so I was kind of like trying it out um, trying to, to yeah test the activities like you said um, and ultimately I realized that I I couldn't do it on my own and actually a lot of people are doing great things um, you know there are a lot of really good brands doing juice cleansing a lot of good brands doing like yoga or other physical activities basketball like everybody has a talent and I wanted to bring all of that together and make it more convenient for people to access um, so this is where Linwords came from. Um, I wanted to make healthy living more convenient and more accessible. Um, reducing a little bit the boundaries or, or um, you know, the, the risk, the level of commitment from people and just make it easy through a platform, making more holistic wellness activities like that. Um, so then I moved to Shanghai where I felt there was you know, a lot more people involved, um, people were more receptive towards that and more professionals uh, in that industry. I think one more that was important for me is um, uh, timing also and following your intuition. Um, when I realized that I was super stressed out and I didn't even know what I was going to do, I think it's also just go with what feels right. What, if you feel like it's not bringing you any happiness, in the end it's like your own life and then you have to, to just kind of follow where your intuition is guiding you. Um, maybe it's the right timing, maybe it's not. Um, I think what I tried to do that in Guangzhou, it wasn't the right timing. I was still, I still had so much to learn, and I still do today. Um, so um, going with the flow and learning, keep learning, and then um, you know adjusting as it as, as the project evolves, because it's it's all about really changes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. What do you think the value was for you of going corporate first and then starting your own company? Yeah, great question. Um, I think it gave me a lot of structure. Um, I saw basically how the bigger companies do it. Um, I'm still not even close to being like that, but I think it helps me plan out. Um, so being able to to gauge different profiles of people to surround yourself in the team, or um, being able to structure departments, kind of you know that that kind of structure. Um, it, it taught me a lot of like discipline as well. Um, Going from one big company to another big company, you know the rules, corporate rules, culture of the company, um, all these things that that will become important when my structure grows. Um, as a startup, you can always just start randomly from scratch and then also build your way up. Um, there's not really like a, a perfect way of structuring your business. Depends on the, the the project and the industry. But I think for me, it 
it um, fit also my mind, the way I like to, to structure and, and, and do things. Um, okay. Yeah, That's it gives me probably nice. confidence also, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Did you have any investors or you did it all by yourself? I didn't. Um, I had uh, savings from basically what I, I worked for my corporate life, so I also feel like that was something that I, it, it felt like um, I was ready to start because I had a little bit of savings to start the activities, the juicing, all these little projects that I could get going to start to test the market. Um, but I never really had like a... Um, a Bill Gates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which would have helped. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot. Um, I've had support from friends and family as well. Um, whenever I needed to get onto another step, if I needed like, to to throw in a, a big chunk of of money um, to get another step forward, uh, I had that, but um, not necessarily like a, a large amount of investment that could allow me to just structure right away as I wish to do. Uh, for the yoga itself, you think it was easier for you to convince a Chinese to do yoga or a foreigner? Uh, <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's. I think people do activities for different reasons. Um, actually, not so much cu culture differences. I think um, there are some people who will uh, want to do yoga as part of their lifestyle and some people who are trying to have specific goals improving flexibility or losing weight or um, personally I find it easier to teach foreigners because my Chinese isn't 100% yet okay. um, but um, there we have in our community right now like about 40% uh, local Chinese um, who join in and that we can you know teach as well bilingual Mm -hmm. um, so it's actually interesting because over the years since I started, I've noticed the evolution as mm -hmm. well um, of of you know the, the, the trend towards holistic um, people wanting to be a little bit more comfortable um, and and balanced individuals um, rather than just going for like uh, fitness goals. Yeah. yeah, and my question is, how did you do that? Your problem. How did you do that? <laughs> How long did it take you to even do that? I mean, how flexible. Okay. Maybe after this we have a class. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> how would it work? How would it work? <laughs> but can you share like a little bit of like how how did you go? Were you ever like a, always just a flexible person? Because I've tried to do yoga before and I know you didn't work for me. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think um, definitely I've practiced yoga for continuously for about 12 years. Okay. Um, and. Before that, I was doing gymnastics. So for normal people, how would that be? That's your concept of normal. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> people who don't know you can do it. <laughs> um, basically, for that, I think the the everybody has different parts of the body that are more flexible. Like for me, for example, the hamstrings are always tight. There's no way I can even till now, I still struggle doing a split after I've done gymnastics or yoga for so long. So everybody's different body is everybody's body is different. Um, the earlier you start yoga, the better because you start to just open up, you know, like grow um, elasticity. Yeah, I'm five years old, it's still early for me. It takes time, it's, lo it's long. Um, the earlier you start, the better. Um, but definitely it's, um, you know, some people have areas where they're more flexible than others. So, um, my back is more flexible, that's why that pose is easier for me to do. Um, but you ask me to do a split right now, I'll probably struggle a little bit. Okay, my name is Waldir. Um, I'm a basketball coach. Uh, I also coach football in <coughs> Juventus Academy. Uh, I coach basketball in, a, in a YBDL. I was born in Cape Verde. Uh, my mom, she's a secretary right now, and my dad is a scientist, you know. And they asked me to keep on doing that. At this time, my, my uncle went to the city hall and he told me, uh, in the city hall I saw a post there that said they have three scholarships to go to China. I said, really? So now they have two scholarships because one is mine, you know, I'm just going to get that. And uh, it was a competition, public competition, ten people took part on it and um, I took part on it also, I was number one. And one year later I came to Sanyang, to uh, south of China to study Chinese language and culture program. Uh, when I arrived in Sanya, the university was not ready to receive foreign students. 
So it means the staff is not ready, the dorms are not ready, the canteen is not ready, so the roads are not ready, a mess. So I said, man, you are wrong. You should go back to Cape Verde right now. But I called my dad, he said, if you come back, people are gonna say you are a loser. You just <laughs> go back to Asia and come back three months later, you know, what are you doing? I said, okay, let me try. And I tried it, I engaged in Chinese program and also took part in competition, speech, uh, it, it helps me a lot to improve my Chinese level at the time because I believe that when you compete you always try harder you know even if you compete yourself with yourself you know I'm gonna push myself to do this and um, and later the foreign students start coming because I was the first one to go there they find lots of problems there you're too old you're 33 you by the way I'm gonna be 40 next next summer so I just graduated two years ago and many people ask me this question how did you manage to spend your 30s in a university you know I just did it you know I don't know why I just put my efforts there and, and I did it the next year a lot of foreign students start coming to this university so I said okay I can do different I'm gonna organize football team volleyball team basketball team uh, guitar jambe uh, whatever we have got to do lots of activities and we did and when we start doing these activities we start getting lots of uh, invitations like uh, the bank team wants us to play them uh, MGM wants us to go and take show there like a fire show or whatever uh, we start doing this for five years so we built a community of 50 foreign students there uh, we did a, like a union and we took part in lots of activities and the school rewarded me also you know they, they got my back they uh, supported me because they needed someone to do this be it in the middle of the Chinese staff and the foreign students because at the beginning there was a shock students fighting all the time you know teachers feeling disrespected or something like that but it was just a, a very strong cultural shock uh, you, we, we come from West Africa and then when you put us in Sanya Hainan that is being in development uh, the levels of education are not that high also people tend to stress very easily and it's hot down there you know <laughs> it's super hot so. uh, I started a program for kids to coach them basketball so I did this um, one lady she came to me and she said I, I knew you were a basketball coach can you coach my kid I said no problems we can try but uh, if the kid likes we can keep on doing it like one-on-one -on -one private class so I went to this uh, class with the kid and it was amazing. The boy was engaged and we had lots of fun. So she posted in WeChat, hey, my kid have amazing bas English basketball class. No, you use English as the language and to force the kids to speak in English, but also they're engaged in sports and basketball practice. So it's a two in one. So I said, okay, I can do it with your kid, that's fine. But the other moms, uh, started to get interested so she came next day with a Toyota Prado full of kids and just dumped me the kids I was like, oh my god this is gonna be fun so I start doing this program uh, once a week and it was successful I start doing it twice a week and then this company in Shanghai they get to know that I was doing this program alone how do you do it I do it alone we don't believe because we have a big company and we have lots of problems trying to manage schedule, coaches, locations. I said, I do it myself. I have my motorbike, I this electric bike. I just move around and coach the kid. At the age of 12, someone told me that my talent was basketball. And I, I never believed that. And until I was called to Cape Verdean U16, U18, and the senior team. So I started to believe that my talent is basketball. You know, besides other talents, because I read a lot, I like to look for information, all kinds of information, but my talent was basketball. I was successful as a player, I was successful as a teammate, I played in four countries, Brazil, South Africa, Portugal, Cape Verde, in seven teams, um, lots of coaches, lots of teammates, I coached girls for four years, so my talent was always basketball, I, did, I, I didn't know that. And now I'm in Shanghai, I coach basketball, I have invitations every day, people texting me, can you coach my kid? And I just refuse because I don't have the time. And you know, you need a program, you're not gonna coach someone for two weeks and then just dump them. 
because I cannot, just because of the money. No, you have to do something that is solid, something meaningful. If you engage in something, you do it until the end. You win, you win, you lose, you lose. I played seven finals, I win only two. So I lost five. But I, I believe that if I die tomorrow, I will die happy because I have an amazing journey at the age of 14. So I'm looking forward to, you know, different projects, photography and other stuff. And, you know, I'm super happy to share my life with you, yeah. with you guys here. Thank you, man. Thank you. This is what you do, compulsory. And, and it means that there is a problem there. And you need to go to the bottom of this problem and then fix it. That's what my dad told me. You know, if you're in a, in a hole, you cannot dig. You cannot dig. You, you're already in a hole. So you need to find ways to get out of the hole. Back out. If you keep digging, nothing's gonna happen. Yeah. Or you're gonna go deeper and deeper and darker and darker. You know, for me, uh, I don't advise people how to do with their life. Uh, I just listen. I listen a lot. And normally people tell me what I want to hear. And I make my judgments uh, inside of myself. I know where you're going and I know what you're doing. So you're fooling yourself. But for me, I know exactly where are you. Yeah. Thank you. That's cool. Uh, all right, guys. So questions, more questions. Please, questions. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. <laughs> By the way, you can like raise your arm like really high, so I can. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what do you think is for you personally? Because you're saying that like, you're really happy right now. Is that do you think because of basketball, or because of teaching? Um, because both of them. Job. <laughs> because of the money. <laughs> yeah. Because of the paycheck. <laughs> it's a way, you know. Uh, balance. Uh, a balance is is the key to everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have balance, it means you live like this. You know, some are strong and some other parts are really weak and it's gonna damage you in some way. So you need to find balance. You need to find um, joy. Of course, my, the teaching is not always happy. I scream at the kids, I get angry. You know, I say, I, this is not what I'm teaching you. But also it's pedagogy, it's education. And, and you live in a country that that the people sometimes they get stressed in China because they don't understand the culture gap, right? I was engaged in, in language and culture program. So for me, it's easier to uh, understand a Chinese kid as I did before with the woman in my, in the, the, my athletes back in my country because I know their background. I know the Chinese culture. I studied it. People didn't just tell me. I went to school to learn about that. In China, you have so many cultures, tea cultures, food culture, family culture, uh, uh, different provinces culture. It's a lot. So if you can absorb that, you can find uh, some balance in everything you do. I go to gym. Um, I eat healthy. You know, I don't cook. <laughs> I can. I well, can. You, not, you get delivery I from don't her? cook. I don't because I believe that uh, I'm living in a, in a place that um, I should use all the facilities to make my life easier, you know? Oh. And, and, and cooking is just going to make my life harder, you know? I'm, not, I'm just going to pilot everything there and go to the supermarket, get the groceries, or even if they deliver it at my doorstep, you know, I still have to manage, wash the dishes and, you know, take care of the kitchen. I don't want to do that. <laughs> we'll think about the full service for you. Exactly. <laughs> Complete service, you know? So, a balance. Balance. Balance is everything. You know, when you feel yourself in a good place, it means you balance yourself. Many people talk uh, spiritually, uh, physically, financially. Yes, it is. It is. You know? Take care of your relationships. Take care of your money. Look at your bank account and smile. <laughs> the best. <laughs> you see? Oh, now the zeros you have in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see? And, 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 uh, and uh, call your friends. You know, talk to them. Joke with them. You know, just tease them. Uh, go to the gym. Try hard. Find an amazing personal trainer to push you. Do your stuff. Just get active and find balance. Okay. And if I can add something to your answer as well, also listen to your story, it's very inspiring. 
uh, one of the things that I realized from my, my vast experience living um, is that we also find happiness when we go through our fears and we persist with our goals. When we reach the point that we actually get something done because we did it and we suffered a bit momentarily but then we did it, then we will find true happiness. It's like, well, I did it. I went through my fear, I went through my struggles, daily struggles, and, and I, I'm at the point that I did it. Right? Exactly. But enjoy the, enjoy the ride. Obviously. Yeah, it is. Enjoy you're going to bump into so many rocks. Um, I think it's a question for all three of you. Do you think, because you, Anna, you mentioned you was an athlete as well, and you do yoga since 12 years. Um, do you think being an athlete makes you a better entrepreneur, business owner, or do you think it holds you back sometimes? Because what you mentioned, like um, when other people say you can't do it, or it's you're going to fail, mm -hmm. then you have to prove that you can do it. And um, I mean, that puts a lot of pressure on you, right? Because it you does. always feel like you have to go show that you can. And um, you say, well, don't spend a month doing something, designing the perfect thing. But if you have that mindset, you always want to be a perfectionist, right? Yeah. So is it, is it better or does it hold you back sometimes? Yeah. Um, well, from my experience, uh, and also looking at my friends that were uh, with me at the time, we were a volleyball team, we were the best students as well. So we had this time-consuming activity on the side and we were the best students. So it this just taught, taught us to be persistent, uh, to do things, to not postpone, and also to, I think, a lot time management because you are always full of activities. and because. We, we grew up in that environment of being full of activities and um, have to be there even if we don't want. Maybe it, it bec we became a little bit more persistent. Yeah? Definitely. Uh, yeah. Um, I also feel like that. Um, personally, I feel like the sports activities, anything related to health, wellness, and fitness, um, aside from the fact that my company is related to that, but it brings me balance, uh, it helps me de-stress. You tap into problems, you solve them in a very different way if you're healthy and balanced yourself. Um, and I think also growing up, I remember also in high school, um, seeing like the, the, looking up to the best students who had it, who seemed to have it all with like, you know, the friends and then the um, top, top teams, uh, everything, the boyfriend, girlfriends, you know, and I felt like, wow, like these guys are really balanced. Um, and I think also growing up, uh, that's also something, some discipline that I wanted to have for myself is to really be able to, to manage everything um, in a way to become the most balanced individual because I felt like that would also bring you happiness. Uh, balance to me is 100% related to happiness um, and I think you, you feel uh, gratification for you know, feeling complete in one aspect of your life, but also in other aspects. If there's only one aspect, I think you could miss other things. Um, so in the end, it's how you how you juggle everything efficiently um, to allow sufficient time for sports, and as well, um, that that kind of freshens up your mind as well to 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 deal with problems uh, in your entrepreneurial life. And this goal to like have it all doesn't put any pressure on you? It does, it does. But at, at, at the end of the day, uh, we have to be competitive. You have to, be, you have to compete with yourself. You know? If you don't compete with yourself, it means you're just being normal. You're not pushing yourself to go there. When people tell me that I'm done, it pushed me to do more. Mm -hmm. When people tell me that I cannot graduate in three months, it pushed me to do more. And then it takes me back to my, to my childhood. When I was in school, um, I compete always because there were three girls that they have good grades. And how can these girls be smarter than me? You understand? But it was just my competitive spirit that was like... And at the end of the day, I, I realized that they studied harder than I did. They put more work into the books than I did. So, of course, the grades are better than mine. And when I started practice basketball, I was a top player. But when I realized that I didn't have a rest, there is no postseason. You, when it's postseason, it's time to recover your body, go to the swimming pool, go to the gym, get your levels of energy up because the season is about to start again. 
it's a it's a cycle you know and when you're being so competitive it takes you to another level it always takes you to of course you have pressure of course you're gonna get tired of course you're gonna lose disappointed you're gonna cry but you still being competitive you still there is more out there there is more trophies to win there is more competitions to play there is not a new season new teammates new coaches there's always fresh something fresh that push you to do more. That, that's our great words. I always say, just be the best of yourself. Yeah, push yourself, push yourself. Yes, Marcus. Okay. Um, my question for you is, if, when you move from Cape Verde to China mm -hmm. and you wanted to go back because of the challenges and your dad told you, don't go back because you don't want to be a loser. Mm -hmm. If he told you something else, would you go back? Probably, because uh, before I came, just before I came, me, my dad and my and my brother, we opened a company for landscaping. Mm -hmm. We started to do plants because our country is very dry. So we started to do plants and we, our dream was to uh, build systems of drops that we can uh, put, uh, make our city more green. But of course, that was not uh, at the beginning. What you want to do is not what is going to get you the money, is not going to get you uh, your company to grow. So uh, we start doing, um, how you call it, uh, plants for indoor plants for offices and banks and stuff, you know. We would just go to the countryside, select the species and um, grow them, make them so beautiful that the bank just see, oh, this is amazing natural plant, we want to have it in the bank, uh, or the general manager want to have something in his beautiful in his office. So we provided this service. And when I told my dad that I, w I got a scholarship to come to China, <coughs> he told me, uh, we just opened a company. So you're my right hand, my, your brother is my left hand, so why are you leaving now? Because I was not happy, I wanted to graduate because I failed the first time I've been in university. It was the feeling inside of you, the guts, right? The guts that this is one of my dreams, is to get a university diploma. So I didn't have it until the age of 33. So now this opportunity is in front of me, so why not take it? So my dad told me no, and then my mom told me, go. Don't tell your dad, mommy. go, just go to China. Yeah. And then I, when I come to China, you know, um, no internet at that time. 2011, no WeChat. Are you sure? I'm sure. I mean, oh, in Hainan, maybe. Not no, WeChat. The internet has, but yeah. in, 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 no, internet, I'm telling, I'm telling for, for students. Okay. Uh, Dorms don't have internet, but the offices, yeah, they have okay. internet. Uh, of course, okay. of course. I'm not, I'm not telling you don't yourself, have right? internet. But you don't have WeChat, you know? Oh, you have QQ at the time that it was like, <laughs> and you cannot use it so much. Even <laughs> smartphones, uh, 2011, I don't remember seeing smartphones. You know, everything was Nokia, Nokia, Nokia. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, it was it was really difficult. I could not order food. I didn't, I didn't know what to eat. You know, so I take this pao uh, kali, uh, and I believe it was water, and it was it was a mess. You know, I mm -hmm. just got what are you doing? This is not your place. This is not how you live. It it was the shock. You know, the shock broke me. So I was like, okay, uh, my friends will text me on Facebook. And I could not use Facebook, but at that time, uh, you still can't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at that time, the, if you receive messages on Facebook, the messages will go to your mailbox because you have uh, you have a mailbox link to your Facebook. Mm -hmm. So you, c I could reply to my friends, but on my mailbox, you know, I could never open my Facebook. You understand? So this is how I communicate. Uh -huh. And my dad just told me, uh, no, don't, don't do that. You, is you, three months. It's only three months. And your 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 major is gonna take six years because I was in Chinese language and culture, so I was to go to HSK five six and then engage to Chinese culture and history. So it was six years, and uh, and he told me you're gonna spend six years in a place and you just been there three months and you wanna come back, <laughs> and and that was like you know people gonna say you work hard to get a ticket as fourteen thousand renminbi to go to come back from West Africa to Hainan. Mm -hmm. You know, Cape Verde, Holland, Holland, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Sanya. 14,000 renminbi. So you spend 14,000 renminbi and you're gonna just gonna drop in three months? <laughs> Doesn't make sense, right? So just endure 
if things don't work out, you still can come back. We still have the company. You still can work for us. We still can work together. Mm -hmm. And I did it. And now I'm here. Nice. I'm still here. I went back for holidays <laughs> and paperwork, and I'm back to China again. Successful, Santia. Right? Yes, <laughs> it is. Face off. Not, not easy, though. <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> yes. I just asked him, thanks for the story. Thank you. Really. I'm, I'm quite inspired because I'm trying to push your career close to that. Okay. So I'll be just asking you to share some of your, like one of the most important lessons you've learned from the basketball process. Uh, from the basketball. To like, will be, how do you see yourself? You in basketball, like in the future, where do you see yourself in basketball in the future? Uh, it depends, you know, it depends because I'm, I'm uh, greedy. Okay. Okay, I'm greedy. And um, I, I will, I, I know that in a year time, in a year and a half, two years, I will feel the need to do more. Get a master's degree, get a PhD, whatever. Um, uh, I will have the need to do more. So uh, right now, I think I'm in a good place. You know, I can breathe. I can breathe, and I just can enjoy. I, I have a very, very relaxed life. Very relaxed. I go to work, and I go to gym, and I go home. That's that's what I do. You know, I don't have any pressure. I don't have any wife. Um, right. Any yeah. People breathing on my neck pushing me to do stuff because all of my goals until now I, I, I mastered to, 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 to accomplish them right and right now of course there will come a time that I will need to do more things whatever if it's relationship whatever if it's um, uh, finance whatever if it's education we always have the need to do more look for more if you sit down and just wait I think you are just going back yeah. you know you're not doing the push-ups so your shape is going back you're not stretching so it's gonna hurt next time it, it, it is like it is yeah. so for me um, I learned that uh, pain can be your friend I learned that people badmouth you can be a good thing I learned that rejection can also inspire you to do more and be better, you know? And these are the bad things that I'm telling you, bad things, but good things, support. You cannot do anything alone. It's impossible, you know? After you being independent, you need some cooperation. You need someone to help you do something. You need people to, to, to uh, put more insights in what you're doing. Even if I'm telling, I wanna do something, I, I was telling her, I want to buy this camera. She said, you don't need to buy an expensive camera. You just need to get a camera. You understand? She, but I was like, no, I want to get a good camera because I've started my project. She, she was talking about this, you know, logo, name and stuff. And she just told me, just get a camera and start taking pictures. I said, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> she said, just use, just use your phone, you know? Just use your phone. But, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's not a night time. So, so, you know, get a camera and, and do your stuff. Put your hands to work and just do your stuff. You do your stuff, man. <laughs> Any more questions, guys? Any more? Yes. Uh, oh, you have one? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, like I said, for true of you, so uh, sorry. I'm Odette from Shanghai Sport University. So when I'm in the group and when I see that the some event about sport and health, I'm like, no, I got one, I can go. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I want to know more about your company. Like, I'm interested about your company. And uh, my question is, do you have anything about being volunteer in your company, like half time? Actually, I'm um, a student in a bachelor degree, so I just start. I want to know more about sports. Sport actually is like my dope. I'm sorry, but it's like my dope. It's like my need to swim and everything. So if you have any volunteering things in your company, I'm free. Just mm -hmm. I want to be there. Yeah. 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 company, company people. Company people. Don't, don't fight. I'm just a nice boy. Company people. 
yoga. I got sick, really sick, like for two weeks, and I cannot even go outside. And I was really fat. Okay, I, I lost a lot of kg. So I really want to learn more. Yeah. So yeah. Just. I think with sports, it's more yeah. jolly, right? So. Um. Yeah. I mean, we we try to you know we do a lot of fitness activities, a lot of. Uh, workshops, retreats, anything that can give you like a, a taste of how you could live a balanced life, either if it's a short program or a longer program. Uh, you know, we're still a startup, so we definitely need volunteers. We need all the help we can get. Um, we really want to, you know, grow our partnerships as well. There's, you know, for us, it's all about community as well. So you're welcome to talk to me after. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, I work for a company that is Chinese-owned uh, company, but all of the coaches are foreigners from all around the world. You name it, United States, uh, Ukraine, Russia, Spain, Philippines, people from all over. Uh, do, you have, do you have female coaches as well? Uh, we have two female coaches, uh, one from Russia, one from Mexico uh, by now. And um, you know, we have people from Senegal, Nigeria, uh, all I'm over. Togo. Togo. Uh, yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, I'm from Cape Verde, like, no matter. I'm from Cape Verde, you know. And uh, the company started as, as uh, a training school. They open campus and teaching basketball, English basketball. Uh, but now they are in a whole another level that is branding level. You know, they, they are now doing a, a sports products. Uh, shoes, uh, shirts, balls, bags, whatever sports uh, gear you need, the company is doing it. So they are uh, taking the training to the branding. You understand? Keep, we keep the training camps, but the main focus of the, the CEO, can I say like that, uh, is, is the branding right now, you know, to develop the brand and make it bigger. So uh, I'm just a tool there and actually they, they respect me a lot because, you know, I can speak Chinese, I understand French, Spanish, Portuguese, I speak in English. <laughs> So uh, you can get her to travel. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta do it. It's on her. It's on her. Uh, you know, I just can get her the network, the contacts. The door. You know, the job only you can get it. Okay, that's up to you. Your talent, your effort, your hard work. Okay. But I can surely get you the contacts, <laughs> managers, everything. You sometimes, um, I don't know, struggle like. Deciding, okay, do I commit now with this country or do I want to go home and do what I do here, maybe home, and how do you deal with that? Yeah. I think um, it's, as Anna said, also get started when you want to get started. Um, I think it's, for comparing to France, it's a good test um, testing ground, um, as in, whether it works or it fails, it's still a good experience, and China allows you to do that more than it would in France. In France, it's a lot more complicated to get a, a business started. Um, so for me, I, I don't think I would ever consider opening a startup in France before. And because I saw also a lot of entrepreneurs around me here, I thought, hey, it looks a lot more easy than I ever thought it could be, which turned out not to be so easy, but um, it gave me the confidence to try. And I think you, whether you're planning to stay or not, if you're doing something with passion, if you, the day you want to leave, either you can take that with you or you can find someone to take over it, you know. Um, Anna, you did something back home as well, and now you're here. So, you know, there's, there's whatever you feels right, you know. Um, any, anything will be a learning experience anyway. Yes. Right? Yeah, for me, it's, uh, every time I go back to Europe and I go back home, I'm really thinking, what the hell am I doing in Shanghai? You know, because obviously I have my family, I have my friends. Um, I think I took a decision to stay in China because I'm young and if I want to take an adventure, it's going to be now. I don't have children, I don't have a, I need to buy a house or anything. So I live in this adventure and one day I know I will be back. And that's what I tell my friends because I, I, everyone's like, come back to Europe at least. But that's it, I'm living the adventure in China, I'm staying for, for some years, and one day I will be back. But yeah, and then I will be back even happier because I had this adventure. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that every time you're outside your natural environment, you feel uncomfortable, right? 
swimming is not easy, right? Because you're in the water, right? It's walking, it's much more easy, right? So every time that you feel yourself in a, in a different environment, let me, let me put it culturally speaking, uh, you will feel uncomfortable. But of course, there are ways to cope with it. You know, there are ways that you can uh, fix it or, you know, just give yourself a fresh air sometimes. Because at the beginning, my idea was like going to China, graduate, come back to Cape Verde, you know, have awesome job because I'm graduated from China. You know, they're gonna just give me the job and then, you know, just live comfortable. It's West Africa, island, no stress. And then uh, when I came here, I said, there is a lot of stress, but you know, the stress, I, I'm a kind of person, you know, that uh, pressure motivates me. You know, if, if it's difficult, I want to do it. You understand, it's difficult. Why I don't understand this? Because it's difficult, so let me try again. And I went back to Cape Verde and I spent six months there. Six months uh, in my hometown, and I believe that that's not what I wanted to do at that time. Because if I wanted to stay there, my dad is a scientist. We have a company of, uh, 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 how to say, how to put it, uh, indoor plants, you know? So I could stay there and work. I'm telling you, easy life, easy life, you know? Go to the beach, come back, mama's food, everything is so easy. And uh, push yourself to swim, that's gonna make you improve, you know? It's gonna make your lungs stronger, it's going to make your body even stronger and your brain healthier, right? Because you always, you like a computer, you're processing all the information all the time. And that's, that's what makes you decide if you want to keep on doing it or not. Right now I'm here, uh, I don't think about moving because I don't have anywhere else to go. But if one day someone give me a preposition, if one day I open LinkedIn, internet, and I see another job in another place that, okay, this will make me happier, or this will be a challenge, why not? Come to Senegal. Why not? You know? It's a nice country. <laughs> why not? But the point, my point is, uh, sometimes people think too much about uh, the future, they don't know what's ahead. And why not you put it right now and put your efforts in what you are doing right now? If you have the chance, a preposition, if you have someone inviting you to join their company, if you have a relationship in another uh, country, why not go there? Yes. But until you have this, don't think about moving, you know, just do your stuff. <laughs> and I think also you need to, to realize what is important for you. Exactly. For me it's very important to have a community here, to have friends, uh, to, to have fun. And in Shanghai, that's easy and hard at the same time because it's easy to meet people, but it's not easy to actually have that community. But you need to really invest time on finding what you need in your life and and just do it here instead of I will leave anyway, so I will postpone these things that are important. Just have a routine and do things that are important for you, do your sports, have your friends, and then you will yeah. also feel happy far from the family and friends. <laughs> Yeah. If I can add something, because yeah. I really feel you are also very special because you are following your passion. And I like to see that and I think in also your case because it's passion and you are sporty people and I used to be also very sporty. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I used to because I cannot say it anymore. <laughs> but I mean, I had also this spirit. Um, I want a better thing for me, not because um, I want to be better than this person or that person. I, I like myself and I want to see myself happier. So, and I know I have it in my hands. It's just that I don't want to make the move. And I know that everyone has his greatness. And it's not about this business because it will bring me more money. It's about what do you like really? Yeah. What, what makes you happy? So what Money, money is a byproduct, it's never end. Of course it's good right? if you do, yeah. if yeah. you have some money. Yeah. But what I mean, if you're not in line what, with what you believe sure. inside of you, right. you will never be the, great, the greatest of what you will do. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the first thing. And then finding a way and being a better entrepreneur is anyway a journey. Mm -hmm. So you will have to get inside, start. And yes, you will make mistakes, yes, you will 
uh, lose, like you said, you will lose seven times and you will win two, right? Five, two. Five, two. <laughs> no. I took your example. So that's life. Yeah. That's life. We are not just born to be perfect. We are not perfect. We are trying to find our ways and in the meantime trying to connect with other people that are also in their journey. As far as nutrition, um, do you have any experience working with youth as far as weight gain or weight loss? Uh, with weight gain, not so much, especially sports nutrition, I never did it. Uh, weight loss, yes. Yeah, I have experience, yeah. Okay, that was my next question in, in, in athletics. Okay. Yeah? Okay, sure. <laughs> That's it? I think I think you, you are an expert on the sports nutrition, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. Weight loss and weight gain for youth. For the youth. For athletes. So you may have a um, American football player or basketball right. player. Everybody has a different size. Everyone has a different shape, just naturally. Some kids are just naturally going to be bigger, and it's actually going to help them in the future. So you don't necessarily want them to lose weight, or you may have a child that. You know, it's quick. He's small, but you see he has those quick twitch muscles. You know, that was the way God made him. Um, as far as guiding him, because also, you don't know where he's going to be 10 years from now. Because everybody knows that the kid that was really, really big, hits puberty, then all of a sudden looks like Hercules. That was just the way he was supposed to, to go. So how do you manage that as far as nutrition without harming him, but still taking him to that next level? And uh, I'm uh, sorry. My name is Jera. I'm a <clears throat> fitness coach, and I work in the beauty area. So bodybuilding, whatever you want to call this. <clears throat> so what we do is uh, athlete or whatever, whoever who want to get bigger. It's everything try error. Yeah, so because it's not easy because everybody works different. So it's like a little bit experiment. So of course. Like for example, I, I have few of my students, I have champions, I have so many different levels, and I need the time with them. Because like to, guide, to gain weight, to be 3% body fat, it's the same food to everybody. But you need to try first how much you need. Yeah, it's about to try. Yeah, you need to know what you what you need to give to them, how to do the math, and then one time you do this, and then how his body responds, mm -hmm. and then you wanna adjust, adjust, adjust to himself. Yeah, it's just like this. You make the math first to his body, and then you wanna give this food to him, this meal plan to him. And then depends on how he answer, and then you wanna adjust or give more, or give less. It is just play. Yeah, yeah, this, this, is, this is very this is very right. I mean nutrition yeah. is a very complex world yeah. and it's still there are still so many researchers and one day you hear that this is good and the other day you hear this is bad. And what we do also uh, when when I did some consultation in the hospitals is really try and error. Yeah. And that's something that we need to tell. Is the first thing I, I, I would tell my my uh, patients. We are going to try something. I don't know if it's gonna work on your body, but let's try and let's you come back and let's see if it worked and then Change. Yeah, first you need to time to know the nutritionist or the dietitians or the training or the trainer. Sorry, you need the time. I cannot change a person in a month if I don't know him. Because I can change my, myself in two months. I have, but, I have, yeah. I have watched a documentary that talks a lot about your own body clock. Mm -hmm. They had cancer patients who was getting chemios, right? And at the moment of the injection, it was not really the time that feed their internal body clock, and it didn't work for them, and it worked for some other people. Even when you were at school and high school, sometimes you realize that, like, they experimented this in the UK. The same test that they give to students in the morning and in the afternoon, they responded very differently to it. So they were looking to basically change the, you know, school hours for the students, because your body clock is completely different from the outside you know, clock that we basically check all the time. So I think it's really important to understand your own body clock. It doesn't mean that you always go to sleep late, that actually you might not get enough rest. It doesn't mean that actually you have to get your breakfast exactly early in the morning. You can get it a little bit late and feel better than the person who gets it early in the morning. So I think understanding your body clock 
is super 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 important like at what time your body clock doesn't really lie the pattern is going to keep coming every day if we try it that every day you will see even when you get drunk what really makes you feel better is going to be kind of a pattern when you finish showering the way you actually use your towel to wipe yourself out it's usually the same pattern if you don't want to spend that time and you are guided with the right people to coach you um or it's also your job to learn yourself a little bit more spend a little bit of time introspecting how is your mind reacting how is your body reacting to certain whether it's situations or foods or activities um and then being able to once you understand yourself you know bringing all the attention back to yourself mm. and figuring yourself out first so limber is actually like inwards look and inwards. look at oh, okay wow that's pretty smart i really want to thank them a lot you know you guys are just awesome <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.